Hello and welcome everyone to today's SAP and uh, purview session. My name is Martin Pankras and I'm a, a senior program manager at uh, Microsoft for SAP integration. And today I have with me Olga Buchelt, um, a direct teammate focusing also on many integration topics from the engineering side and product development, as well as uh, Chandra from, from our fast track team who engages customers directly and brings a rich uh, experience and um, focus on the data side, including purview today. So we have a nice roundup to, to talk about the topics today. Uh, hi, everyone. Hey, hi. Hey. Yeah. And we want to dive right in um, with a um, like a business case where you look at this from a, from a customer perspective. And um, SAP is uh, for many companies globally um, a major resource yeah, of your data that powers your business. And uh, there are even some numbers going around where uh, I think SAP says that um, like a large proportion in the 70% plus um, of every business transaction performed globally touches as in an SAP system at some point. Yeah? So quite, quite impressive there. Yeah? So let me share my screen and we start looking at a Power BI um, dashboard where very often um, you start explaining how your business goes, how it performs where there are um, things to look at deeper. And um, this comes with with um, with a challenge, yeah, because you need to understand how this is actually uh, comprises. Can can you, how do you look at this? How trustworthy is this? Um, is it complete? Yeah, how do you actually make sure um, that you can um, be very open with this? Yeah, And this is from a personal, um, view of, of someone who, who uh, consumes this, but it could also be about the um, auditing and compliance topics. Huh? How you can can you prove to someone um, that this is complete and only shows you what it's supposed to show up? Yeah? Maybe there's a business group that shouldn't show up here yeah? because I'm EMEA based and I shouldn't see what happens in Australia. Yeah? So. Exactly, and I think just, just to add to that, I mean, I think we see a lot of customers that have the data, as you said, in their SAP systems lying around. And um, at the same time, there, there is this need to visualize and get better insights in what is actually happening. And that's why we see so many customers actually using Power BI to connect to an SAP system, to connect to lots of other systems. And I think that's where um, these beautiful dashboards then um, show up. But as you said, now the question is, um, where's the data coming from? Um, especially if Power BI is not only showing data from, from one data source, but from multiple data sources. Um, where's where's this data coming from? Um, what's the lineage? How, how do I get more insights and more clarity and confidence in the data? That's a very good point, yeah. And we'll also see uh, other sources um, playing into the mix here. Yeah? And uh, lineage is a good good segue to the, the next thing we want to show here. So we are now in the Purview Studio where we see a nice uh, flow of, of lineage and, and maybe Chandra you can uh, explain a little more what we what we actually see here yeah? when yeah. we have the Power BI dashboard on the right. Yeah so this is actually a dash uh, a purview um, studio which shows the actual lineage of data uh, flowing from SAP all the way into the right on the Power BI dashboard and where all the data has uh, been transformed and been uh, copied into. So as you would see, uh, the data came in from SAP system uh, through a copy activity from a data factory, and it landed into a data lake store uh, as a CSV file. And then we had a Power BI report, which uh, grabbed that information off onto a, a report, uh, off onto a data set and to a report in Power BI. And then finally, it made its way into the uh, dashboard on a Power BI uh, end user screen. Think so for me, this flows is really, really interesting because I mean, obviously what we are seeing here is very, very simple. Um, we have we have one data source in, in the backend and then we have a Power BI dashboard um, a, as a result. But if we would have multiple backend systems, if we would have additional transformations, if we would have um, different containers, basically like the CSV file, I think that's where, where, with this view, we have a beautiful overview where, where anyone can immediately see, um, okay, that's where the data is coming from. This is how we are merging the data. This is what we are doing with this. And that's the, the end result. So I think, yes, th th this, this view that we are seeing here might be fairly basic, 
but I think it shows the the, the power of um, what we can actually visualize with the Pervy Studio here. It's That's true. correct. And in order to you know uh, get to this type of a, a view, uh, then the first thing would probably be to first of all scan uh, the SAP systems, and for that uh, probably you can switch to the screen where we have the. Yes, so here we have a video that is coming from the PG that uh, already uh, tells us about how to scan uh, SAP systems using Azure Purview. So you would probably want to uh, take a look at this video and then you know set up a scan using Azure Purview. And we have already uh, done a few scans, which is basically how we are seeing the information flow into Azure Purview. And in order to do that scan, uh, we'll probably also want to show you a quick view on where to look for. So if you can switch to the other screen, uh, the Sweet scanning idea. screen, no, uh, to the scan screen, yeah, that one. So here uh, under, under the uh, main root collection, what we have is that we have uh, option to create sub collections and also create further scans. So if you click on one of the uh, register uh, scans under the FTA purview, for example. Yeah, that's cool too. Now you will see that there are lots of connectors that we already support out of the box. Uh, some of them uh, are in preview, as you would see, for example, and some of them are already released. And PG is working hard to get more and more connectors uh, lit up in this area. And when you filter on SAP systems, you would see that these are the currently existing uh, connectors that you can use to connect to SAP. Uh, Martin, probably you're better off talking about uh, each of these connectors. Thank you, John. Yeah. So the um, the connectivity options that we have today is SAP's business warehouse. Yeah. So the um, their data warehousing solution. Um, the ECC is the uh, the legacy ERP, and the SAP HANA one is the uh, the their database. Yeah. So here we have more um, product level in terms of application. And here it's really uh, bare bones database access. And the S for HANA one here is the uh, successor uh, ERP flavor of the ECC one. Yeah? And what we showed today uh, was based out of the S for um, what, so the, the 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 new ERP flavor of it. Um, but this is uh, from application uh, perspective, it's already quite a good set, yeah, for which covers most customer bases. Mm -hmm. And I think in, in, the, in the other screen, um, we can already see here, for example, that um, in this scenario, we not only have um, connected the scenario to, an, to, to SAP systems, to multiple SAP systems, but also, for example, to Salesforce, to, to other databases. So um, that's where you can really have this, this holistic overview then and, and basically drill down in um, what data sources are available, what um, tables are extracted, and then how you in the end visualize the data, um, for example, in Power BI, or obviously do, do some other analytics works, work on the data. Exactly, yeah. and our lineage before showed um, this Power BI tenant uh, as the source, um, this as for HANA, as well as um, this data lake, yeah, where we had uh, contact points with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to describe how we got that lineage working, uh, maybe we want to switch into the ADF uh, mm -hmm. view. So what we have here is that we copying uh, the AC docket uh, table from SAP system, uh, and then um, you know the sync is going to be the ADLS, the CSV file we saw on the lineage earlier. And if you look at the um, you know uh, runtime, uh, the run status of that particular pipeline, you would see that the status is succeeded and the lineage also uh, has been sent back into uh, purview uh, account uh, successfully. So that's the starting point uh, where data is copied from SAP into ADLS. And uh, once the data is copied, we then, uh, as a Power BI developer, uh, the developer then set up a, a connection to the uh, data that was copied and has created the report, uh, the data set, the report and the dashboard. Uh, which then will provide its own lineage using the Power BI scan when we do that. So we now have two sets of lineages, one coming from ADF and one coming from Power BI. And then we have used another technique to join these two lineages uh, to show in one screen. 
and which is where we would like to you know thank a few of our colleagues uh, that have uh, provided us with some packages and source code or sample code uh, to get this uh, going and so uh, pai apache atlas is the package that we have used uh, that's done by one of our colleagues uh, by name william johnson and yeah that's the uh, location where you can get this uh, package from and then we have another colleague uh, by name frank who has written a small piece of code that helps us uh, use the pai apache atlas package and then stitch uh, the lineage coming from adf along with uh, the lineage coming from power bi and uh, once we have it's a small piece of code which you run and once we have executed that piece of code it will then uh, stitch these two sets of lineages together and then uh, show in one end to end diagram where you see uh, data coming from uh, sap and where it ended up in the power bi dashboard mm -hmm. that was a uh, very nice work uh, of the colleagues that you uh, added to to our mix there uh, chandraya and just to make sure um, do we have the, the spots uh, mentioned here again? So from, from here, ADF knew where to send the lineage because we registered this particular tenant in, in our purview uh, instance as well, yeah? So that's why that's this great. then was sent there, yeah? That's and from, he, from here, um, so the, 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 the lineage here from ADF is automatically transmitted because of the registration. And the registration of Power BI also gives us this out of the box. But to make sure that we um, link this to uh, create this view, yeah, which was important to us, we leveraged the uh, built-in APIs that PowerView has with Apache Atlas using those scripts, Byron, the nice colleagues you mentioned before, um, to create this particular view. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, uh, once you have done that, then probably you just need to do a bit of a refresh uh, to make sure that you know the end-to-end uh, -end lineage shows up. But uh, that's basically uh, the only extra step that we need to do in order to get the end-to-end -end lineage. Exactly. So, and all of this um, we described in a in a blog post, which also will reference this this video and the the other one, um, where we where you get also some more context uh, on this which we can recommend to have a look at alongside this video and you would like to finish um, with a, a look at the the scan that we did to kick this all off so from giving here so the, this particular scan and that's here right now you would probably click on the second one and here and then Click on collections. Exactly. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So that was the scan which we ran some time back. Mm -hmm. And it gets you a quite impressive amount of assets. Yeah. So your SAP backend system is uh, famous for having a lot of tables <laughs> and a lot of objects. And um, when you watch the other video and um, process the, the steps mentioned there, um, you arrive at the same same screen here. Um, I would like to mention that um, it gives you a comprehensive set of all objects, yeah? and we encourage you to have a look at uh, at them and see if you really require all of them. Yeah? At this point, um, the, we are quite sure that tables and views will be required yeah? to get something done like we showed today, um, but there's also other development objects where you make, need to make a decision if they are required or if, if yeah, they are of value to you at this point, yeah, which then influences if you really have to scan all of these or smaller amounts, since this is um, also processing intensive and um, takes some time. Yeah? And so our, our scan here at uh, the first, first version of it uh, took a day and a bit. Yeah? Not the extraction, but the actual processing and putting it all uh, into the, the data lake. But I think that that already shows how um, powerful, complex um, the, the the SAP system or the underlying structure in an SAP system is. And it also then makes it very clear from my point of view that the trust in the data is extremely important. And especially for business users that are working with SAP, 
they, they, they need to have this, this trust and confidence in the data. So yes, they, they might get a beautiful Power BI screen. Um, we know all the steps, how to extract the data. We know how to um, do transformation, joining the data, joining it with, with other data sources and, and, and so on. But I think one thing that's, that has been missing um, uh, when, when, when we look at a similar situation like two years ago or something like that, yes, we had these beautiful Power BI dashboards, but it was fairly complicated to convince um, uh, um, auditors or, or whatever that, look, this is really where the data is coming from. And I think with, with this purview integration, with the SAP connectors, with, with all the other connectors, and you quickly showed in the list that um, it's a quite comprehensive list and, and not only limited to Microsoft, um, uh, but also really to a lot of third party tools that um, with these connections that we now provide in purview, that we can give this full transparency um, to the user, to auditors, to, to others, to, to make it very clear where data is originating from and, and um, where we're doing uh, certain things with, um, with the data. And I think that would really help um, increase the trust also for, for a business user when working um, with an SAP system. That's true. That's a good summary there, Holger. Any closing thoughts there, Chandra? Um, closing thoughts, yeah, Purview is a fairly new service, uh, so it's uh, evolving as we speak. Uh, um, every time you refresh, uh, you come to the Purview portal, you will see something new. Uh, PG is working hard on bringing in something um, new, um, and then, yeah, uh, that's where I would look at uh, going forward is uh, there are new features we are only looking at. Uh, the cataloging feature, we're only looking at the lineage feature, but there are also a lot of new other features like uh, policy management and workflow management and stuff like that, which are coming in. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned. Uh, there's a lot to come. Thank you very much for uh, doing this session with me today and looking forward to the next one. Yep. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Everyone.